Okay students, we have a new challenge and need your solutions. This month, our challenge has to do with germs and preventing the spread of illnesses and disease like the cold and flu in schools. Companies like TGen in downtown Phoenix are focused on studying more about how DNA in our genes impact our behavior and our health. Your DNA, which is found in the nucleus of your cells, is like an instruction manual. It's filled with instructions, which we call genes. These genes are what make up who you are. Researchers at TGen look to unravel these genetic components to study complex diseases, including cancer, neurological disorders, infectious diseases, and rare childhood disorders. Treating and preventing those diseases requires complex solutions, but there is so much that we can do in our schools and in our communities to help prevent the spread of germs that cause disease. Do you know the difference between what causes the flu and the common cold? How long will these germs survive once they contaminate a surface? Take a look at the following video to learn more. How long do cold and flu viruses live on the surfaces of your house? Good old winter, the time of year when cold and flu cases seem more common than peppermint lattes. Inevitably, a friend, coworker, or family member is gonna catch one of those illnesses and start spreading the contagions around before knowing they are sick. But before you douse everything in disinfectant, here's what you should know about how long viruses live on your hands, subway poles, and everything in between. Colds and the flu are caused by viruses, non-living pieces of genetic code covered in protein coats that can only multiply by infecting the cells of a living organism. The majority of viruses that cause cold and flu cases also have protected lipid layers known as a viral envelope. Most common colds are caused by rhinoviruses, though others like coronavirus and respiratory syncytial virus can also be culprits. The flu is caused mainly by a variety of influenza A viruses. Colds and flus are usually transmitted person to person, via tiny droplets in the air. Like when a contagious person coughs, sneezes, or even talks too close to you. That's because these viruses and their viral envelopes remain viable in moist, warm environments, and they infect us when they land in similar places, like our throats and nasal passageways. But what happens when these pathogens land on our skin, or countertop? How long do they survive? Well, keep in mind that viruses aren't alive, so the term survive is technically not correct. They're either infectious or identifiable. Cold-causing rhinoviruses and most influenza viruses can be found on surfaces for more than seven days, meaning their genetic material remains intact and detectable, but their ability to infect deteriorates swiftly, dissipating after 24 hours. Flu viruses generally cease to be infectious after nine hours on non-porous surfaces like metals and plastics, and four hours on porous surfaces like Kleenex. Scientists aren't entirely sure why. Most theories suggest that porous surfaces suck away moisture faster, and this drying out reduces virus stability. But temperature changes, sunlight, and salt can play a role. Even materials themselves can make a difference. One study found that flu viruses can remain infectious on stainless steel for up to seven days, though their numbers drop off during that time. On copper surfaces, however, flu viruses basically cease to be infectious after six hours. When it comes to hands and skin, cold-causing rhinoviruses are only infectious between a few minutes to about an hour, and influenza viruses cease to be infectious after about 15 minutes. But considering how often we scratch our faces, rub our eyes, or high-five a friend, that's still plenty of time to pass on the bugs. So how do you avoid these infections? The National Institutes of Health and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommend that you wash your hands or use hand sanitizer regularly. Sneeze and cough into tissues when you can and immediately throw those suckers away. Periodically wipe down surfaces with a disinfectant, especially if you think someone sick was near them in the last 12 hours. Soaps, alcohol, bleach, and hydrogen peroxide disrupt viral envelopes and other structures necessary for virus survival, greatly reducing their ability to infect. And for heaven's sake, get a flu shot. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Julia Griffin. And I'm Seacon Akpan. According to the World Health Organization, 80% of chronic diseases are preventable, and there are steps that we can take to limit the spread of these diseases. Your challenge this month is to research the spread of germs at school and design a solution to reduce the number of students getting sick from the cold and flu. We look forward to hearing from you about your ideas and solutions. Germs and the spread of disease at your school. Can you solve it?